For Unreal Engine 4.22, Epic added a new feature called Editor Utility Widgets, which are very similar to UMG widgets, but are meant to be used in the editor instead of a packaged game. With these widgets, you can do stuff like select all actors with a tag, or by class, or teleport the viewport camera. And I'm barely scratching the surface of what can be done. But I started using these widgets more seriously only with a 4.25 release when Epic added two more killer functions, set and get editor property. With a set editor property function, you can create scripts that modify your assets. These two functions were the missing pieces needed to make truly powerful editor tools. In case you didn't know, this is what the underside of nodes in Unreal Engine looks like. As you can see, it's full of scratches and that's because the more you move them around, the more scratched they become and that negatively affects the speed of your code. But should you make your own tools? I mean, Unreal Engine already comes with a buttload of plugins and tools and then there's the marketplace full of useful stuff. So why waste time making your own? The answer is really simple because there isn't a tool for what you need done or it's too expensive. So this is the tool I've been working on. The purpose of it is to simplify and streamline the process of adding new vehicles to the game. Here I can mark different body parts. This information can later be used to either spawn some visual effects or to apply a different damage amount based on where the hit originated. It's just a matter of selecting vertices like so. I also try to make it foolproof, so if I'm doing something stupid, it will let me know. The texture tool is where I create all the textures needed, mostly for visual effects. My OG subscribers might remember one of my devlogs where I showed how I configured the collision, and while it worked just fine, I didn't want that logic to be a part of the vehicle blueprint. So this tool now handles collision setup as well. You might start to notice a pattern here. Many of the tools use the 2D viewport. That's because it's quick and simple to implement, but I'm planning to replace this 2D tool with a proper 3D interface because it's consuming too much of my brain power. I mean, I have to mentally transform a 2D texture into a 3D model to configure it properly, which feels like making origami, but only in your head. The most challenging feature to implement by far was the deform tool. Not only it uses 3D instead of 2D, which already adds a bunch of complexity, but I also had to recreate viewport controls because they stop working when a widget has focus in Unreal Engine 4. Also, I thought I could do a mouse line trace with this handy function, only to find out it also doesn't work when a widget has focus, and I need that focus for mouse button presses to be registered. And in case you're wondering, no, you can't use any of the handy deprojection functions that come with the engine because they all require the player controller, which is not valid in the editor. Luckily, you can use the get view projection matrix to deproject mouse position to world position. The deform tool has two selection modes, triangle select and sphere select. I use the sphere select mode most of the time, but the triangle selection comes in handy in tricky areas. It also supports mirroring and I can toggle between front faces, back faces or both. And it also has a very basic undo buffer. Overall, it's a very simple tool that does only one thing. As I was developing it, I thought it could be used by modders to add custom vehicles in the future. However, it would take a while to adapt it for runtime use, so I'll look into it only after the initial release. You might be wondering how I added vehicles to the game before I made this tool. Well, let's just say it was quite time consuming. It involved both third-party software, marketplace plugins and was a giant pain in the butt. I remember dreading just the thought of adding another vehicle to the game because the whole process was so unintuitive and cumbersome. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the modeling and texturing part, but the implementation was dreadful. Adding a new vehicle is a lot easier now. I just type in the name, pick which assets I want created and done. I try to do a good job of making it safe so that some stuff doesn't get overwritten or deleted, but if in my next devlog I'm talking about how I bricked my project, then you'll know I didn't do a very good job. I want to give a shout out to Solar Storm Interactive and Ryan for creating this awesome free function library. It made my life a lot easier when developing this tool. It's still free at the time of publishing, so go grab it. But do you know what doesn't deserve a shout out? 
Slate.enable synthetic cursor moves. This console command is the worst. I'm sure there's a very good reason to have it and why it's enabled by default and most of you probably wouldn't even care about such a minor thing, but this really drove me up the wall. Look at this lazy bastard slow walking me. You think you can diss me like that? How about now? That's right, not so tough now are you? I think I might be going insane, which I hear is a natural stage of development so I'm not too worried. It's temporary, right? It's just temporary, right? Thanks to my supporters, Nekot the Brave, Mishovi, Tatu, Poniak Ways. These are the people who've supported this project financially by either becoming a Patreon or donating on Ko-fi. Sorry for butchering your names, but that's what you signed up for. If you would also like to support this project, then you can do what these awesome people did or just enjoy my videos and drop a like, which really helps a lot. I always knew likes are very important because almost every YouTuber was asking to like and comment at the beginning of their videos, but I underestimated how important they are. In my last devlog, I asked for the first time to click like if you enjoyed it, and that video completely destroyed all my other videos and I gained a bunch of new subscribers. Although it could have been just a coincidence, so click like if you enjoyed this video, you know just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Anyway, if you're a retro Unreal developer, I have a couple of asset packs you can check out. One of them will help you get closer to that mysterious PlayStation 1 look in Unreal Engine 4 or 5. And the other pack is all about particles and lens flares. The sales from these asset packs really help me a lot to continue working on the game. Thanks to everyone who's already purchased them.